So, hi folks, welcome to a tour of M-Hub. We're a manufacturing innovation hub. Here we create the conditions for product innovation to thrive by giving entrepreneurs access to the tools, the resources, the networks, the equipment they need to develop and manufacture a product and launch a new business. Uh, so that was a mouthful, but you're gonna see the space uh, and see some of the coolest things that we have here at M-Hub. I like, first of all, it sounds like you have that memorized. And two, I like on your website how, how you have this kind of cool answer to what does the M stand for? Yeah, well it stands for a lot of things. It stands for machines, manufacturing, mentors, you know, our members, momentum. There's so much going on here. It's so much more than, you know, one of the buzzwords that's become about makerspace or just entrepreneurship or just making or just machining. This is a pretty cool tour. Yeah, so this is professional making. These entrepreneurs are working here full time. We also collaborate with industry to help them innovate. You know, there's a whole open innovation movement where they will give us industry challenges and our members here will solve them. Cool. Um, so it's just, it's the, it's the new way product development happens. This is kind of a cool installation that showcases our sponsors. Uh, it was inspired by uh, the manufacturing process vacuum forming. So these, uh, our that. sponsors get sucked into the wall. So how does it, they, they just alternate? So yeah, so there's a, uh, an Arduino here um, that's running the, the, the algorithm here. There's a vacuum pump um, that has like triple wall insulation so you don't hear the vacuum. Right. It's a loud, loud machine. Um, and then uh, there's a, a sheet of latex here over uh, our sponsors that are spaced out. Um, and then it cycles through with the vacuum and it pulls them into the They wall. look. They look really good. Yeah. You can't control which goes on. No, I mean, it's running a random loop yeah. right now. So, um, and then we've got um, a row of, um, you know, these are sensors, or these, we've got sensors, actuators, and then they're all kind of popping up here. That speaks to my heart. Yeah, there's actually another one that you might want to see. The so, liquid metal? Yeah, so yes. this is a uh, ferrofluid. So cool. Um, What's it, ferrofluid? It's called ferrofluid, okay. and it's iron nanoparticles uh, suspended in an oil. Uh, and they react to a magnetic field, and the particles align in those, uh, those field orientations. So I built this piece to call attention to uh, an awards called the Fourth Revolution Awards that we're doing to really uh, focus on product innovation and manufacturing. Uh, and so we gave away seven awards uh, this year, and we're going to do it again next year for you know, innovative products, innovative companies that are helping entre entrepreneurship, manufacturing, and product development. Th this is amazing. Um, and so this is, um, there's about one liter of ferro food in here, and the logo um, has an R and a four in it, um, and then the logo rotates. Um, the, the spikes are uh, very cool. Yeah. The, that, the signature ferro fluid look? So I've, I've known about ferro fluids for 20 or so years and it took me a long time to figure out well, what, what can I actually do with this that right. would be fun. Do they have a commercial use? Uh, yeah, so they're used in um, like dynamic shocks okay. uh, in some high-end speakers. Huh. Um, so uh, there's couplings that you can dynamically change the torque. Okay. Um, and so you apply a little electric current and it changes the viscosity of the fluid in here. Yep. Uh, and then it, um, it, it, it makes that fluid more, when it's more viscous, then it, uh, it can couple more torque. So a little bit of history about this building. Uh, we're renting it from Motorola Mobility. They sold it to Lenovo and Lenovo moved out. Okay. They were developing and manufacturing cellular devices. Uh, and cellular prototypes in this facility. It's 63,000 square feet. Holy cow. Uh, and, and folks, we're, we're in Chicago, like we're not in the yeah. suburbs, we're so in Chicago. downtown Chicago, we're two blocks away from the Blue Line, the Chicago Blue Line. Um, and so it's, it's, it's an amazing facility to have access to all this equipment, about $22 million of infrastructure yeah. uh, that they gave us. And now we're utilizing that for entrepreneurs and industry to build new products. Awesome. We also do a lot of classes. Um, this is our, one of our classrooms. We've got two classrooms in the space. A lot of courses on entrepreneurship, uh, manufacturing, uh, product innovation. Um, we do a lot of Autodesk you know, classes in here as well. Um, and then this is our event space. We host about a dozen events a week. A dozen uh, a week? Yeah, it's, it's quite a bit. So either in here or in the classroom, um, we had a huge blockchain event uh, last night with about 500 people 
and a waiting list of another 300. So, what, is, what is blockchain? So blockchain uh, is basically a way of logging information okay. uh, in blocks. Yep. And once the full block is completed, they add it to the chain. Okay. Uh, and then they start the next block. So you get a history of all these transactions. Yeah, that's, I keep hearing about it in regards to cryptocurrencies right. as a way that that backend database works. Yeah, so it's not, it's, uh, it's not completely anonymous like most people think because there's a record of every transaction that happens. Right. Uh, and once the transaction is complete, it adds it to the block. Once the block's complete, it goes onto this chain. Got it. Uh, and it takes a lot of processing power to complete a block. Huh. So basically you're spending energy to do computations because they're all encrypted mm -hmm. and then once they're encrypted they go onto this block uh, and there's a lot of applications you know even in manufacturing so um, so yeah we had that event Very here cool last space. night um, and I think this is where we'll be hosting a lot of the activity for our manufacturing entrepreneurship summit here um, yeah, so folks that's what we just announced which we're super excited is that in September we're going to be doing uh, a different form of, of the NYC CNC open house which is going to be a September 2018 event on manufacturing entrepreneurship here at M Hub. Yeah. In this kind of space, this classroom, this is what's awesome. Couple of fun things, we have a community bar right here. Um, we integrated circuit boards down <laughs> here. Uh, <laughs> so the, these are backlit circuit boards. Uh, we use a lot of uh, you know real materials. There's some steampunk going along here. Our, our logo is etched into the surface. Oh yeah, look at that. Couple things that I think you'll like over here. So we've got our, our keg down here. Um, and our beer just pours, you know, right out of the chuck here. That's amazing. Uh, and then our That's little, amazing. Yeah. So I can kind of show you how it works. There's actually. an Arduino for some reason right there. So this is a Raspberry Pi oh, sorry, that, sorry. yeah, that projects onto our logo. So we've got a projector where uh, we can do videos or you know whatever we want, but it just does it within the bounds of the logo. Uh, no so way. it's not like a. That's, yeah, it doesn't splash over. Yeah, it doesn't splash over like a, a rectangular screen. Which, That's super cool. You know, if we want to watch a game, we can bring a screen down. But um, during, you know, events, we'll have kind of a video going on our logo. Sure. Um, the guts in here, there's a, we have a pneumatic line all throughout this facility. There's even one that's uh, <laughs> turning this valve. So this is a, uh, the beer's coming up right through, um, right through here. And then we've got a, uh, uh, a solenoid valve yep. that energizes this cylinder that pushes your standard um, yeah, yeah. beer tap. I love because that's the, sometimes that's the best way to make things is to not over engineer it, but rather just actuate yeah. the existing mechanism. Exactly, and, and this is a reliable, well-tested mechanism. Uh, and as you pull this down, it just it just pops um, uh, it just pops the piston there. That's beautiful. And so um, you just run a. Th did you have to drill out anything in the spindle? Yeah, I did. So I had to. I had to drill one piece. Um, but I'm thinking about making a kit and and, and selling them. This so is amazing. We'll see. I also want to show you this. So this is our, um, actually our liquor cabinet here. <laughs> and I'm a big fan of tequila myself. Um, Look at so, that. So uh, it's a. a dual it's a really stage. smooth. Motion. Yeah. Did you drill into the floor? So don't tell anybody, but I, I had to. I had to make four mounting holes. <laughs> um, the piston is inside here, so the piston doesn't go through the floor. Really? But uh, the aluminum plate that I, I bolted to the floor, so this is you know more stable. Sure. Um, That's awesome. And then you know I have some some rustic gears here. Um, this I got a, at an auction. Um, so it's just kind of uh, you know some things that I really geek out about. I like how you even have it plugged in, even though yeah. it's probably well, not. Well, actually, no. So if you unplug this, uh, it's just it's just the machine down. So you can oh. also turn that. Uh, if you don't want anyone drinking, you can pull the safety Wait. tab here. Serious? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So I mean, that <laughs> that actually just gives power. It's a safety lock. It gives power to this. Okay. So if you're uh, underage, you have to hack the 110. Right. That's uh, awesome. And eventually, we're going to scan. We all have M Hub cards, so you okay. just scan your card and then. We want to keep track of you know how many drinks people are drinking and, and whatnot. That's um, great. And eventually we're going to put a scale down here uh, and use this. We have addressable LEDs under here. Okay. Um, and I can change change the color just with this knob here. Um, this is awesome. And then uh, eventually we'll have like a a health meter on our keg, so we know how much is left. Right. Maybe we'll know what temperature. Um, you know. So there's a lot of fun things. Have that it automatically reorder when yeah. it gets down yeah, to 60%. Exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. Now comes the real exciting part. It's like we're living in an Adafruit catalog. So this is where the innovation happens behind these doors. 
this is the Marmon co-working space. This is where a lot of the collisions happen between the entrepreneurs. So we have about 350 members right now, uh -huh. about 100 companies in this space mm -hmm. that, are, that they're all developing and manufacturing their products. A lot of it is you know, IoT mm -hmm. products. Um, there's a lot of consumer electronic devices. Uh, there's a lot of medical devices. Um, and they use you know, this kind of co-working space for $300 a month to get access to this space, as well as about $3 million this, of folks. equipment Look at this. Uh, in, the, in the labs that surround um, the office here. And that's what I like about starting to understand the M-Hub model is it's not just, uh, it, it's so much more than any one thing. And, and there's, what I also, what, and what I like is that there's an element of sustain, sustainability to your mm -hmm. own. I mean, yeah. you're an entrepreneur. You yeah. put this together. Folks, this, this facility didn't exist a year ago. Yeah, so I mean, our one year anniversary is coming up. We launched on March 2nd of last year. Of 2017. Official, yeah, officially opening. Uh, and you know, our, our, our one year anniversary is coming up. It's amazing. We've been, we have been in this space uh, during some construction. So we've been in here uh, since September uh, 2016. Okay. Um, and then we... we and we're actually putting up more offices today uh, because all these private offices are sold. Good for you. Let me show you the cool awesome. stuff. So we've got uh, our electronics lab in here. So um, this is the Molex electronics lab. We've got two SMT lines in here. This is, stands for surface mount technology. Sure. So if you're manufacturing a circuit board, uh, this is a machine that can do it in high volume. Um, so, so you literally can have, you as a member have access to not just the software, not just help on design, yeah. but literally you can come in here and you could do a run of a thousand boards. Exactly. Yeah. So this one's operated by a third party. Okay. Uh, this is the one that members can operate. So okay. it's a Neodin 4. Uh, you basically load your component reels in here. This machine picks and places those components and puts them on your circuit board at the right orientation uh, and position. Then the boards come through here and then they go through a the reflow, reflow oven. oven. Right. So this is like a big fancy pizza oven. Uh, but instead of cooking pizza, you're cooking circuit boards. Uh, so, so this doesn't happen very fast? They kind of just go through there? Yeah, like, I mean, the, yeah, it, it, it might take uh, 15 minutes to go through this line, maybe a half an hour. Um, but that moves, these, these move some yeah. of the fastest moving machines you've ever seen. Yeah, uh, and, and the, the highest end ones have, you know, carbon fiber chassis. Um, so you're, you're, you're picking four parts at a time and then placing those four boards. There's also a camera that uh, inspects the part to make sure it's there uh, before it places it. These ones are even faster. So it's amazing. Um, this first machine puts the solder paste on the board. Uh -huh. uh, so you have a screen, uh, you, you wipe um, you know, this, this paste onto the board uh, to where you're gonna- Only over the pads. pads. Right, right. Yeah, so it, you've got copper pads, uh, and then the board comes in through this machine, um, and this can pick in place, uh, I think it does 84 components at a time, but we've got two in series if you have more than uh, 84 discrete components. Amazing, so in other words, 84 different chips or resistors or transistors. Yeah, so, and, and basically you dock reels. your components mm -hmm. in here in, in reels, and we'll see the reels in a second. Uh, yeah, you got some reels on that machine right yeah, here. Yeah, so, so yeah, this is what, a, this is what a, a components look like. So these are little tiny resistors. 0201 or something? Yeah. yeah. And then um, that machine strips it from this, this uh, reel of tape and grabs it. And it grabs like four at a time and then places us. That's awesome. Uh, and then it goes through this, this larger reflow oven. Look at that. So this has 16 individual stages, um, heating zones. So you can heat the, there's eight zones on the bottom, eight zones on the top. Um, to get the, the perfect you know, yeah. heating temperature profile. So this is what some of the reels look like. But you can put any sort of, or generally, they're different styles for different types of components. Yeah, so some components are larger than others. Yeah. Um, and some, some components are so big, you gotta put them on a tray, and that machine will grab them from a tray. And uh, those might be the, the processors and whatnot. So this is where the development happens. Before you get to automation, um, you know, you're working with oscilloscopes, multimeters, uh, you're soldering. This is where you spend most of your time developing the circuit board. It kind of it kind of looks like Motorola is just still here. You know? Yeah, that's yeah. really so they, cool. Motorola did leave a lot of equipment. They left us about a million dollars worth of furniture. We're standing on anti-static floors, so that if you're wearing a full jumpsuit, you're grounded to the floor. That's awesome. And that's great, especially in the winter. You know how if you shuffle your feet and you touch metal, 
that would destroy your circuit board because um, high voltages you know short those paths and then we also have a bunch of components so these are uh, capacitors resistors um, you know motorola left a lot of this behind for you know our entrepreneurs to use so i think you'll be most excited yes about this look at so, this uh, this is the cnc lab so we've got the haas machines here we've got the tormach here um, i want to introduce you to quinn What's going uh, on, Quinn? Shop Sherpa here. John Saunders. John Saunders, good to meet you. It's good to meet you. Watch quite a few of your videos. Thank you. Can you kind of walk through some of the machines uh, that we got here, some of the capabilities? Sure. Uh, so if you actually look behind you, uh, this is our intro area. So all of these machines I can get you on in about a day. Um, As a member, you can get up and running making parts that yes. quick. That's awesome. Um, so we have a couple of Carvies, some uh, Roland, a new Roland one of our members brought in. But the Carvies are literally about an hour. The Roland will take you a little bit longer, and then the Tormach behind you, as you know from the channel, uh, is a two-day process or two-day checkout process. Okay. Um, and so we say kind of learn on these so you get the feel for mm -hmm. CNCs, and then jump on this once you kind of understand what you're doing. Um, it's really nice because it's an intermediate prototype level kind of deal. Sure. Um, Bill was saying the Tormach's been busy and booked. It's extremely busy. That's One awesome. of the first things I did when I started working here was developing our training system so that it's a uh, handheld group class and then you kind of I, I shadow you to make sure that you're not going to break anything yeah but uh, a lot of people seem to be getting a hang of it and i was impressed at how quickly you could teach someone how to use this machine mm -hmm. i mean what what's the standard say i have some experience in, in a machine shop mm -hmm. but no cnc experience how long would it take so we, are, we have a couple different members uh, levels essentially one of our uh, members who's never touched the cnc before but has a product that definitely needs to be machined uh, David, I helped him. He was in the beta of testing, but within about a week, he was up and running. That's awesome. Uh, and then one of our older members, um, or not older, but he, one of our more experienced members, um, used to work on the CNC shop like 20 years ago. And so it's been a while, but he got on it and it was like training wheels. It just super, came right back up. Yep. Yeah. Super easy. That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. Do you want to show us some of the, uh, the more desktop equipment here? Uh, so yeah, behind us, we have the Roland setup. Um, okay. The purpose of what we have for this guy is actually to do PCB board and through co through oh. whole component stuff. Sure, sure. Yeah, keep that uh, keep that glass stuff off of the exactly. Ice so yeah, well, uh, there's a couple of programs that are super easy. So you have a Gerber file with all your traces and your component whole locations and that yep. kind of stuff. You say here are the bits, and then it says, okay, those bits aren't big enough to fit, so I'm not going to drill that hole or this oh, channel. Nice. Yeah, it's kind of so you're like, oh, I need to adjust or find a different size bit. Um, we do have. You know, a bunch of tooling for people to purchase so they don't have to go hunt for yep. whatever little thing. Uh, and then there's general use tools that everybody can use mm -hmm. so you don't have to outfit your first. But you just set. start with a copper clad board, machine away, drill, and then. And then rock and you roll. go test. If it doesn't yeah. work, you figure out where the problem is, you do it again, do yeah. it instead and so of. So you can do single board iterations yeah. in a day. Right. And, and most times you have to, to put them up. We don't do any, um, any of the etching process here because it's a chemical process yeah. uh, and so this is you know a way where you can do multi iterations in a single day yeah in so, the same building without leaving yeah. the shop exactly the, the turnaround time goes from two weeks or two months to your iteration is a day yep. a day a day hey my product works let's you know go from a surface mount yep. yeah uh, one of our new ones or one of our older ones but as our smaller fourth axis um, so oh yeah look at that rotary. that's cool yeah I like the jaw system on the clamping. Yep. So you can still do flat parts in a rotation. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the training things that, that Roland puts out for that is actually, I think it's a coin. So uh -huh. You can flip a coin halfway through. Uh, and then Carvey, which is um, an in Inventables product sure. uh, based here in Chicago. Yep. And uh, Zach Kaplan's on our board as well. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Um, He's the founder of, or CEO of Inventables, right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's super easy to get onto. It's literally point, click, draw a thing, say your depth, and it tell it what material and what bit, and it figures it out the rest for you. It's awesome. You can override it a little bit, but it's pretty much fail safe. That's great. Yeah. Um, and then one of our newest ones. Well, once oh, get, yeah, yeah and, and and we had you know we did a seminar where kids were doing making their own fidget spinners on these. Um, uh, they were making tiles. Uh, it was easy to teach. Yep you know, middle school yeah. kids on how to use this equipment. Um, and it really gets them excited about CNC. Yeah. You know, and then Honestly, they, kids. yeah. How long, how long before they were like, they, they were, yeah. Were and they're how old? Six? Six, yeah. This is what I love. This is what didn't, and this is my, you know, my, my soft spot here in machining, but you know, 10 years ago, 
you didn't have any of these machines, let alone having Invincibles next to a Tormach, next to a Haas. Yeah. I mean, literally we're within like 20 feet of all three of those machines. Yeah. That's really cool. Uh, I think I counted before you came, we have nine CNC's. Awesome. Uh, and there's a couple more plans for some other stuff. We call this the C of uh, C CNC's. C it's the CNC C, or <laughs> C of CNC's. She sells CNC by the she shore. Exactly. And then this is uh, one of our new member. Uh, he brought this in, it's, he's testing it, but uh, it'll be up for It's a Roland use. MDX. So it actually it does a fourth axis as well as a three axis. Yeah. Frame. So you can yeah, it's use got them both the the deuce vice on it. Out. Right, right, right. This is kind of a bridge column. That's really cool. Yeah. A little mini tapered. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see some of the big equipment. The Huss. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, these would be all of your starting equipment stuff. Uh, to get on for the first time, then you jump to the tour box. Do you have, are you seeing from your members, you know, you have a lot of tech, IoT, I mean, are those folks interested in the hardware manufacturing side? Uh, yeah, uh, medical devices are one of our big ones. IoT, uh, consumer products of yeah. every nature. So yeah. quite a bit of everything. Cool. So we do have a couple of the old school things. There's occasionally people like to do it by, you know, handheld or manual. Sure. Uh, if it's their first one. Um, but over here. Nice bandsaw. Oh yeah, all the accessories, yep. little bits. Yeah, a lot of people don't even realize that there's things like lettered drill bits. Mm -hmm. And so I, I teach a general metals class on Fridays. Yeah. Uh, it's how to how to properly use a drill bit, how to, you know, not have something fling off the table, mm -hmm. um, files, measuring, how to actually use calipers and dial indicators and all that stuff because most people are like, I have no idea what that is. For, for folks in the Chicago area, you know, what, are they able to leverage classes or resources here if they're not a member? Yeah, I mean, a lot of the classes that we offer here are free. And, and open. And open. Okay. But there are some like the, the welding and grinding certification classes uh, and you know the Haas equipment here. Mm -hmm. We've partnered with the TMA uh, as part of a workforce development okay. initiative. And the TMA stands for Technology Manufacturing Association. Okay. Um, they're actually giving NIMS you know, credential certification okay. here uh, after you go through a 16 week course. Okay, so that's different than a Friday afternoon yeah. so crash the, course. The, the Friday afternoon crash course, we do have occasional open houses. Like we just had one for the laser cutter, about 30 people showed up. Mm -hmm. um, you don't run it per se, but you get to learn about what the capabilities are. Sure. And then the general classes, those are shop training considered. So like to get on the band saws, yep. you need to take that class so that you know to only cut half inch stock or greater. Yeah, on that's band pretty saw normal less, for yeah, exactly. Yeah. Space. So that Friday afternoon class is for members, Got but okay. membership, you know, isn't really all that expensive. Yeah, I tell you, I was thinking about this. I, I'm, I can't imagine what my life would have been like had a place like this existed when I lived in New York City. Yeah. It almost would have been bad because I may not have left New York City. Yeah. But this is this is amazing. Um, yeah. You know, because you guys have extended hours for certain membership levels, mm -hmm. right? You can be in here nights and weekends or hustling yeah. through. And uh, the ones that are here in nights and weekends, that uh, you know, those are the hustlers. Yeah. You know, they're going to be successful. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, we have people that come in. Basically, when we open the doors, then they leave when we close the doors. It's funny. So they are you know, Boom. working on their stuff. I, I'd ask what this is, but I know. <laughs> oh, but, but this is new, right? Yes. Okay. So uh, these are actually the TMA's machines that they keep in our facility. Okay. Um, TMA, a lot of their places are actually out in the burbs, so it's a little bit difficult for city individuals to take their classes. Yep. Um, so this is kind of a satellite location. Okay. Um, but the, we have an ST10, yep. uh, which is a wonderful lake. These are pretty much never been used. They're, they're their equipment. They brought them in. But, but again, um, like weeks old or not even. Uh, first time run in here. Yeah. I have the first piece off that house over there. Yeah, like last year. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's awesome. Um, and then we have the T, uh, TM2P, yep. uh, which is a wonderful machine as well. Uh, both of them. And folks, you know, this is here as a kind of a teaching machine, but go look at the video card here to Jay Pearson. Jay used a TM to machine a lot of the parts for the Pearson work holding. I think they actually just replaced it with a VF4, uh, but, you know, make no mistake, these machines uh, are very capable. So these would be our production level quality machines. Uh, most people on the channel would probably understand that. But so you figure out your part, how well it's going to work on the, the machine that isn't, you know, if, if you run into something, you crash something, you break something, it's not that bad. Yep. Um, on here, these are, you know, you're going to say set and go, set and go, and it's a hell of a lot quicker. Yeah. Excuse my language. <laughs> no, sure, totally. Yep. It's always funny seeing one of these, though, when you've been using the, the VF2s or something where they don't have the weight covered. I mean, they, you know, it's a, it's a value machine. They strip some stuff off, but well, awesome. Uh, uh, just to show, like, this is grease from the factory. Still, yeah. Yeah, it's still, still new, yeah, very cool. 
Are you intimidated? Are you are you getting comfortable with yourself using these? Um, so I actually cut my teeth on. Uh, I learned ShopBot first, then a Hassan Fadal at the same time in another shop in Chicago. Okay. So it's, I'm a little rusty on them, but a tool is a tool is a tool. Yeah, awesome. I, I will awesome. say though, I really do like the Pathpilot interface. It is probably the right? best interface. I wish I could uh, put. I want to put it on the ShopBot. Yeah, not gonna lie. it is know, very I'm well done. Mm -hmm. So, yep, very cool. All right, there's more to see. I'm gonna take you uh, probably probably through our plastic. Thank you, slab. Uh, thank you, Quinn. Absolutely. I'll take you through our, our plastic slab next. We've got a, a form tech here for vacuum forming. Oh, awesome! Um, so these are some of the things that have yes. come out of this machine. Uh, so it will do. This is amazing. Yeah. So this uh. is this is the fun kind of stuff. Um, so you would machine the the negative of that or the. Yeah. Or the, the so in the wood shop, you would uh, you would make the mold for this or metal. Yeah, or, or metal. So there actually there is this is porous aluminum. Oh yeah. Um, so the way a vacuum form uh, machine works is it it pulls a vacuum around this mold yeah. and it sucks down plastic. And uh, this is a very special type of aluminum where uh, you know if you pull a vacuum here, it will suck that plastic through it. Really? Through this metal. And it, so it's obviously more lightweight. It's got yeah, it's, I mean, and it's, it's super it's cool. Easier to machine, so uh, you can either if you're doing you know high volume, you'd use something like porous yeah. aluminum where that's, um, it that's actually really like cools the part well. too. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, or you might just use you know FDM or. Uh, so you'd use a sheet like that on there. It heats it yeah. up and then so sucks it down. Yeah, the sheet would uh, um, be clamped underneath here. Uh, the heaters would come in. You heat it till this starts to sag. Yeah. Uh, and then you you pop your mold up. You turn on the vacuum and the plastic sucks, sucks down. down. So we have actually some members making their first couple hundred uh, with that process. Um, over here, we've got uh, our, in, our Morgan press. So this is an injection molding machine. Um, what's great about this is it's, uh, it's easy to use um, and it's semi-automated, um, but it, it allows you to make the first 500 of the pieces. You know, you're not gonna be making hundreds of thousands out of here because uh, the cycle time may be about a minute on this machine. Uh, but really the goal here is to lower the barriers to entry to the first kind of 500, sure. and then we'll set you up with manufacturing partners. Um, and and we, we've talked about that. As a, as a job shopper, as a vendor, you want to deal with customers that have proven the hustle. They've, yeah. they've been at it. They have they put some sweat equity into it. It's such a different conversation when they've come to you with sample parts with the mold they use. Let's talk about the Morgan right. Express. That really helps. Yeah, I mean it's it's easier to raise investment dollars after you've sold, you know, 500 in years. So you've proven the business model. You've proven that people are willing to pay for your product, uh, and you've proven that you can that the, that the tech works and yeah. you can manufacture it at a cost that uh, you know is profitable. So. Um, then after you get those prototypes out in the field or those first runs, then we scale you know, through our manufacturing partners. Awesome. Um, we've got a baby injection molding machine right. here, more for educational purposes, uh, and a, a line bender here for um, you know, bending uh, plastic parts. Yep. Um, I'm gonna take you back to see our, um, our laser cutting lab uh, and introduce you to the shop manager. Uh, so this is John Wellen. He's our shop Hi. manager. Hey, John. Great. John Saunders. Good to, Good to meet you. Great. Yeah, come on in. Take Thank a look you. at our laser cutters. Uh, the laser cutting lab is easily one of the most popular labs in the shop. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. The laser cutters are very versatile and very easy to use. I can cut, uh, given a 2D vector file, I can cut a variety of materials, flat sheets of plastic and wood. It's often uh, combined with some of our other processes. So we have an example here of a vacuum form piece out of ABS plastic. Huh. After it was formed, it was put into the laser cutter to cut really? this intricate hole pattern. Oh yeah. And then taken back out, and the linear bender was used to bend these little ears. Oh sure, snap in. That's very cool. More and that what's that? Then. What's amazing is that none of that was actually particularly difficult. No, it was very easy. It was a matter of days of that yeah. effort to produce several hundred of those parts. That's awesome. Uh, and this is actually a mosquito trap. Um, and so basically, it's a, this is a lid for a box. Okay. Uh, they put an attractant that he makes into this box. There's a little fan in here that blows the attractant out huh. through these holes. Yeah. And then the mosquitoes come in and they get sucked in through this fan and they get trapped into the box. Uh, he showed me a bag. Oh, it was really I gross. don't want to see that. Yeah. A thousand mosquitoes that he caught uh, in a matter of days. It was really cool.
Yeah, so we've got a couple of laser cutters in use now. Members are uh, setting up jobs on acrylic and wood. Um, I wish you could convey smell over uh, over YouTube because it's got that wonderful burnt laser smell. Burnt laser wood, burnt wood smell. Uh, we have up to 150 watts CO2 lasers. Uh, that's great for cutting plastics and wood. I can't cut uh, metals per se, but it can affect the surface. Yep. So you can knock the anodizing off. Yep. You can knock the bluing off the steel. Uh, and that's often good for marking. Yep. But you can etch an acrylic like this. Acrylic. This yeah. is etched acrylic. Acrylic yeah, it is looks nice great. because it turns white when it's etched. Looks really good. It's good right. for parts that you might eventually make out of metal and volume. Mm -hmm. But if you want a prototype, it could take uh, really just an afternoon to put your whole assembly together. Awesome. To make sure you have the holes in the right places. Uh, so next up is our assembly area. So um, we've got all these tables so that people can spread out and you know disassemble a, a product, maybe do some testing here, uh, and reassemble you know uh, several hundred units. Um, we also have these garage units sponsored by Chamberlain, uh, and uh, they're they're individual you know labs. If you have a dedicated machine, maybe you want to do some long-term testing, you can set up that dedicated space the way you need it to. And so this is part of the business model for MHub as well. So you would rent one of these out. Yeah. So these is about thirteen fifty. You get access to a private space, yep. but in a machine shop environment. Uh, and then you can spill out, kind of use any of these tables, you know. Uh, during the day. Yeah, they're, they're obviously all taken. Yeah, they're all taken. I wish we could build more garages. Um, they look cool. It's kind of like this uh, movie set feel they're, almost. They're fun. I mean, a lot of startups start in a garage. Right, right, right. So, um, do you watch, uh, do you watch um, Silicon Valley? Yeah. When the guy like builds the garage inside his airplane hangar? Yeah, yeah. that was, that was awesome, system, right? Yeah. And then he opens it up and it's like a huge... Yeah. A um, couple cool companies. So Holograms and NVNO, um, and they basically uh, produce, you know, uh, data packages. So they, they buy um, cellular data from Sprint, AT&T, uh, and they, you know, and Verizon, they'll package it up uh, and sell you small bits of data used for like I connected IoT Really? Devices. Oh, sure. Uh, and they also produce some hardware, um, you know, like a little USB modem that works off a of cellular. Yeah. They also have a cellular chip, um, you know, similar to the, to the particle, but instead of Bluetooth, it's cellular. Uh, and then you can buy little data packages yeah, sure. from them. So you can connect any machine or any device uh, with their hardware uh, and then get global data rates that are, because they buy in bulk they're, and they sell you small bits. It's, Is this something that I could use for my project or do you need to be a big yeah, company? To I mean, similar to an Arduino yeah. where you can, and it uses the Arduino IDE, so yeah. you can program onto their, onto their hardware um, and just have cellular connected you know, technology. Um, this is uh, Autodesk and Continuous Composites. Uh, they're doing some amazing research in here. I'm going to see if Blake uh, is in here and available. Hey, Blake, do you have a moment? And Max? So what we haven't seen is a, effectively a large six-axis robot like you would think when you see a, a welding robot at a car factory, but the output is what you're holding? Absolutely. The output is what we're holding. This is the next frontier of uh, additive manufacturing. Okay. So it's not just a regular extrusion process. It's what we call free-forming. Yep. It's a project initiative that we started as Autodesk in order to support our Dreamcatcher, which is uh, a sure. generative design software where you are not drafting the shape, they are actually letting the computer to synthesize the geometry, geometry like this yep. one. And in order to do this part, we are leveraging fiber material, so a completely new concept again of additive manufacturing, and we are partnering with Continuous Composite in order to uh, really manufacture what you see. So you're the, the brains from Autodesk, and you're the brains from Continuous Composites. Correct, yes. Very cool. So you're from the software side, Dreamcatcher, with the idea that you can feed it parameters and have it give you generative design. Correct. Sliders to choose processes Correct. and materials. It's really machine learning and yep. artificial intelligence applied to additive manufacturing. So yep. new strategy on the path and new software to synthesize the shape, and then as well new material that I'm going to comment in a moment. So absolutely, yeah. And uh, from continuous composites, we're developing the hardware side of this. Okay. Uh, we actually have developed the extrusion process. We're feeding continuous fiber through a matrix, mm -hmm. curing it on the fly as we're okay. moving. So we're actually able to create very unique shapes. Mm -hmm. We're able to, uh, we don't need any support material. Support, you're right. That's really And that's, that's, that's right. the brilliant that's thing. So we can do something such as this with our six axis robot. Yeah. This is a continuous helix going all the way around, up and around. 
No supports required. It came right off the bed That's like awesome. this. And it's just, it's incredible. We're able to do so complex of shapes. Like we're able to do this. We're able to do multiple materials. We're able to do carbon multiple fiber. Multiple materials simultaneously. simultaneously. Yeah, yeah wow. absolutely. We can do carbon fiber. Right. We can do fiberglass. Uh -huh. This, I mean, you can see this is a wing shape. Sh sure. And we built in all of the structure right into it. Oh and by being able to do these multiple materials at once, we're able to do very unique stuff, such as this. This is copper wire embedded in the fiberglass. Huh. So, so this one has conductivity property. So in essence, the goal for Autodesk is as well to not create a part that is dead, but a part that has life, no? <laughs> so this profile will be able to understand itself because inside here is a continuous fiber, so there are as well fiber optics, yep. uh, which uh, give you the opportunity to sense and collect the data. Sure. So then later on you're learning from a true experience. So you're really creating a digital part. There is no mold, okay? Right, right, right. The experience is coming directly from the part, so we will be able to propose to our customer an opportunity if they have a dream to yeah. rea to make that dream true in a very short period of time because th he's like a baby he's learning himself and he's growing okay <laughs> we saw a demo folks on on Dreamcatcher, and yeah. i'll keep it short but they fed it the formula one rule book Correct. with no n nobody yeah. sat in front of a cad computer they fed it the rule book and the software was smart enough through machine learning to design a new cockpit that met the fia speculations specifications rather, and it gave them all of these outputs based on sheet metals, 3D printing, subtractive manufacturing, added manufacturing, and you literally had these slider bars where you could choose what was more important, time, strength, certainty, amazing. Yeah, that's exactly the project. So what we're doing here, so I'm working directly with the CTO of Auto, this Jeff Kowalski, yep. so one of their scientists, uh, is actually developing what I call generative manufacturing, where the manufacturing is not anymore a post-process, but in essence, you are teaching to the robot, you are building a brain on top of the robot in order to create this amazing structure. It's amazing. That's very cool. Thank you, very much, guys. Appreciate the tour. Uh, that's a good lead into a 3D printing lab. So we just signed a partnership with Fisher Unitech. They're a distributor of Stratasys equipment. Excuse me, okay. Yes. Here is their lab. So this is a, the 3D printing lab. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna have David kind of walk you through some of the technologies. There's four different types of 3D printing technologies in here. Uh, Dave is one of our shop techs here. Cool, uh, hey, John Saunders. Hey, nice to meet you. Good to meet you. So uh, on this side of the room here, we kind of have uh, more of like the maker level machines, a lot cheaper to print on, you know, pretty much anyone can get up and running and using them. Um, yeah, the household many... names, MakerBots, the Form Labs. Oh, of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, having the Form Labs here is really cool because it kind of bridges that gap between like, you know, a professional level printer and still, you know, relatively easy to use. So actually right here, this is kind of a cool application. One of our members is printing a mold for a little device that he's making. So if you want to- Can we see it? We yeah, it? check it yeah. out, yeah. Um, so this is kind of neat. So he's going to try injection molding um, using these actual 3D prints. So cool. that'll be a... It's insane. Yeah, and finished, so you'll be able to just shear that yeah, support can, stuff right off. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yep. These are, you know, the Form Labs um, is amazing because the, the build quality for the price is spectacular. Mm -hmm. uh, it just is. And, the, and you've got a much higher certainty of print success, right? Yeah. Um, you just kind of, yeah. There's still a lot of little details, you know, it's not an industrial machine, but for the most part, it's as close as you can get, you know, in your kind of home. Yeah. Yeah. And this is a stereo lithography process. It uses a UV curable resin. There's like a UV projector underneath that cures each layer. The part grows from a vat of fluid. Yeah. Um, so then we'll go over to the other side. So the other side of the room we kind of have is our like professional level 3D yeah. printing. Um, and I think, well, from a sense of like professional, uh, yeah, sure, we sure. go from this side. Um, work our way up. Yeah, work our way up. Uh, so over here, so we actually, this is great, we just had Fisher Unitech come in here to bring these printers in. Um, and so these are all Stratasys machines. Okay. And the first set of machines here, these are like, you know, the step up from the MakerBot. So the same kind of technology where you're extruding a filament, yep. but, you know, they're pretty much click and go machines. Anyone who's used MakerBots or, you know, the home level FDMs are right. fussy. Yeah, you know that you know it can be hit or miss. There's a lot of experimentation, which is fun. But you know when you really need to get a product done or you need a prototype now, yeah, you know it's these things are so less you know, less sure about fire. higher build quality, more about certainty. They're fully enclosed. They control the heat, and the build. Exactly. Yeah, they have you know a, a wide variety of materials that you know can give you a much stronger capabilities. They also all have support materials, so you know okay. you're always worried about 
building support onto 3D prints and having to tear it off and yeah. over. Yeah, and this stuff support like that. dissolves with water. Oh, um, that's cool. And yeah. the materials they have are Altem, which is very high temperature plastic with very good engineering properties. There's also polycarbonate that they run through. So it's not just kind of the ABS and okay. the PLA, it's really the, the engineered plastics. Uh, but it just, it's on a roll, just like you'd see on a home level exactly. machine? That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. yeah, the rolls are just considered, well, actually you can see them handling a roll. Of oh yeah, there we go. That's, uh, uh, in the locked door. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're a little bit more yeah, expensive, sure. but you know, like I said, you do get, so these are some of the prints that came off. These are all FDM. And again, folks, if you're new to 3D printing, FDM, think about extruding frosting out of a nozzle, just yeah. at a really precise level. A CNC controlled hot glue gun, basically. Exactly. Yeah. So these are all those parts. And you know, anyone who's familiar with those desktop printers, you can see that like you know, the ability to, you know, get these overhangs and have them look pretty, it's yeah, difficult. Yeah, it's very difficult sure. to do. But um, yeah, so they kind of consider this one like you're um, in an office machine. This is more of the production. Okay. Like this has a lot more material capabilities, like filled like carbon fiber and all sorts of different things like that. Um, and then one of the examples they were giving was like layups. You can print in that soluble material, do like a carbon fiber layup and then melt the material. Oh, that is so, cool. that was, so that was a really cool application for it for making like custom tubing. Sure. Um, and then yeah, over here, factor. yeah, these are some of the things. This is just kind of one of those like really awesome, yes. huge prints, you know, the jaws of life. And that was printed in one. This wasn't one piece. Oh, this okay. this back assembled. section was one okay. piece. But all these were, um, for very large one-piece prints, both of these are. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. Yes. So this is, this is all hollow. This actually came off the, the Ford 900 machine. It's pretty light, actually. Yeah, it's amazing. One. It's single layer. Bill's really strong as well. <laughs> I mean, it's single layer, so it's actually. But, but it's strong. I mean, you, can, yeah. you, can, you can feel when you push on it. It doesn't have what you would think of as some big major sag yeah. or weakness. And then this is kind of another cool one. This is actually the top cover off of that machine and this is a 3d print why did you good grief that's incredible yeah so this is a much heavier yeah you know, and then you just press in some uh threaded inserts for right. yeah sure that's awesome so, and then they're showing how you can paint that and stuff so. very um, nice but yeah we'll move up the and then here are their molds actually so they actually have done some molds this is what they call their digital abs material huh um and it comes off with that polish to it? This is yeah. the poly jet process. This is, yeah, so this, this is, is the is, next machine yeah. we're okay. going to show you right Got now. <clears throat> so anyways, yeah, these are the poly jet machines. Um, this one's more focused at like, you know, for dental applications. They're okay. actually printing crown molds right now. Cool. Um, but this Can process, we zoom in on it? Yeah, okay. go ahead. Um, this process is more, you know, it uses a similar material to what the Formlabs okay. printer is using except it's laying it down like an inkjet printer mm -hmm. and then curing it with that light as it comes over. Whereas this is selectively printing, that's selectively curing. Yep, yep. That's a great way to explain it. But yeah. you you don't waste, that, that stuff can get recycled subject to itself shelf life. It's not as though you waste it once it's gone, once it's in the build table. Right, I mean, you can you can cover those build platforms and they remain stable for yeah. quite a while. Um, whereas this, you know, this actually just stores them in and puts it out so yeah they're both kind of efficient processes but uh obviously just much more expensive but higher tolerance and this has that support material again so uh, there's that you have to break off yep the supports this no prints it and you wash it off with water and what is that yeah so on their higher end machine you can do full color and uh, different durometers so you can select that's cool the durometer you know all the way down from like a real rubbery, you know, eraser, maybe mm -hmm. drummer 30 all the way up to 90 where it's stiff like a, a urethane wheel. So, sure. So this is one of their um, testing samples for flexibility so you can yeah, feel yeah, that yeah. they get harder as you go up this way. And you can mix durometer within the same print? Yeah. yeah. So That's in the amazing. same print you could have a shape that it's, it's soft on one end and right. it gets hard on the other. So it's, yeah. Yeah. it's pretty crazy stuff. And then here's, um, this, oh, awesome. this, this is another kind of one off of that same very high end printer, which we. We don't have in here. It's the same technology, just multiple heads. Okay. And this one has the full color. So the the highest end one has this full color capability and the flexible mix. Wow. So yeah. like you can really get perfect, you know, a yeah, product that's, that's cool. completely right. You know. And that's on their Connex machine and the J750. Yeah. So over here, like I said, both of these use that same process. This one, like I said, is dental application. You can see it has multiple heads. Yep. Um, this is the Prime, which allows you to print 
the flexible material. Okay. But it doesn't necessarily print um, multiple materials. Yeah, so like, one at a time. Yeah, so you Try. can print like a flexible part okay. or a normal part or whatever, and it can print this digital ABS material. But these are not machines you're going to find at your normal, uh, even a relic maker makerspace. These are pretty high-end yeah, machines. Yeah, these are definitely, you know, higher-end. Yeah, professional machines. Yeah. yeah. And then kind of at the very top of the line here, um, you know, these are all jetting processes. Right here we have the EOS machine, and that is a SLS, so Selective, Selective Laser Centering. Um, and that just, you know, is what a lot of people consider the top end. Very sure. strong parts. Um, there are parts that are used right off of the machine oh. in an airplane. So, yeah. So you can see what's happening here. The wiper just came across, uh -huh. and now it's going to selectively center. You'll see the laser come and across. You'll see the There's part a huge dark. amount of heat coming off. Yeah, yeah, so the whole thing is heated right to the melting, close to okay. the melting temperature, and then the laser just pushes it over. Oh, yeah, you can see, you can see it walk across. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. And I think that's one of the things that I learned recently is that there is a lot more... 3D printing and actual end user manufacturing is happening now mm -hmm. than I realized yeah, in, in aerospace sure. and in medical and even in defense. Yeah, uh, and Motobags, one of the startups uh, in this space, they've got a suitcase mm -hmm. that you can ride on. It goes about 12 miles an hour. Um, and, you know, uh, part of a bridge to production, they were producing some, some of the initial test units mm -hmm. in here. Uh, so they don't have to make expensive tooling. Mm -hmm. Tooling molds, yeah, um, sure. And so this, is, uh, this gives you real uh, very, you know, tough, hard parts. Uh, the surface finish is um, a little coarse, uh, and so there's diff there's advantages and disadvantages to each technology. If you want a smooth surface finish, you would use, you know, the PolyJet technology or the SLA. Yeah. If you want strength, you would use, uh, you know. Uh, but this, you can center metals, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. The metal is cool because the cold sintering process. They take it, they heat oh. it up. So like where this brings it all the way like close to melting depth, metal is just melted with the laser so it's like attached to the bed. Got it. So yeah. that's kind of interesting. Uh, but you know, if you wanted to feel that surface finish, yeah. um, you know, this is the kind of part. So you can feel that you can get very thin, but it's also quite strong. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Well, thanks for showing us the yeah. 3D printing lab. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. So up next is the CAD station. So before you get into the 3D printing lab um, or before you get into CNC machining, you have to develop the product on CAD software. Um, and uh, we've got six stations here um, with Autodesk products and SolidWorks products. Uh, we even have Eagle if you're making a circuit sure. board. Um, so now, now an Autodesk product. Now, yeah, that's true, um, and I think that's why we have Eagle that's now. Right, yeah. uh, but these are super high-end workstations. Basically. Yeah. So these these have a lot of horsepower. Um, you can also check out licenses on your own computer if you're on the oh, Hub network. That's cool. Uh, so yeah, so you can have uh, your own workstation, and if you can check out uh, licenses to our server here. That's cool. uh, you have to be on premise though, yeah. um, and so we have a partnership with both SolidWorks and Autodesk. Very cool. Um, we also have some private offices here, um, a lot of interesting IoT companies. Um, I'm going to walk you through some construction uh, to see our metal uh, fabrication lab. So this is our metal uh, welding and grinding lab. How's it going? Good, how are you doing? Pretty good. Um, we've Look got this. A, a lot of hydraulic bending equipment over sure. here. Um, so the, the workhorse is the 55 ton iron worker. We've got the exact same one. Yeah, so this thing is great. So it's got, um, you know, if you want to do corner notching or just, you know, regular notching there, um, you've got a, an 18 inch shear. Um, if you've got, you know, angle iron, you can cut it here. Uh, you can put a, lots of different dies in here for punching through holes. Yep. But this will punch through some really thick Gnarly, stuff. Yeah. Um, and then this machine powers the, the 40 ton uh, shop press, uh, we got a break in there right now. Powers the 10 tub tube bender. Um, so this is kind of the, uh, the quick work you can do here. Um, and then there's a 20 ton horizontal uh, press. So this is more convenient if you're making a box or um, you know, bending and manipulating metal. And do you, you wanna talk about what you're making? Yeah, sure. So um, my company is called Skate Castle. Uh, we're making a line of products and accessories for like the electric longboard market, uh, like the boosted boards that are really popular now, okay. as well as regular longboards and skateboards. 
Um, so this is actually one of the shackles that we're using on a security product, um, a lock product for uh, skateboards as well as booster boards that um, we're, uh, we're working on inventing right now. Cool. So, so you're a member here at MHub. Yes, I am. Awesome. I work awesome. here full time. Very cool. Uh, so one of the, the desk spaces reserved us. Is it's sweet. also CNCing, uh, I, I guess, the, the chassis of your lock system yeah. right now. So, so this is like one of the components we're making, um, basically cutting down half inch steel round bar um, right just on the chop saw over there yep. moving it over here putting a notch in as you're going to see and then finishing the product here and then the other part the housing we're making um, like both said over on the CNC on the Tormach sure which you guys probably saw yeah. are going to see or, yeah yeah okay. so so yeah get lined up here Inserts a nice little bend, a little foot in there, as mm -hmm. you can see. And, uh, and how do you know the orientation here? Like, um, this goes up straight up or straight down? Or? Straight down. Okay. Straight down. And, and once again, we've been, uh, we've been playing around. We have some MVPs, kind of minimum viable products. Okay. Yep. Um, but That's awesome. uh, still working on getting it um, just commercially, uh, commercially available right now. Folks, card here, we just did an article on the site on thinking through what is a minimal, minimum viable product and what should you be thinking as an entrepreneur about? Is this something worth pursuing and how do you get there and kind of the fail fast, fail cheap mantra? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, so we got this queued up now, got it locked into the bender. Um, have the, uh, the dial set back here to, to get it to go up to 180. The funny thing is actually uh, to bend something like this since you have spring back, you're sure. really aiming to like go to 190, 193. I haven't figured out the Yeah. 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 Yeah, but uh, it's awesome. Actually, as you see, have several pin uh, like rotations we're gonna do here. As the uh, it is a steel bar, so it definitely um, has a lot of uh, a lot of pushback, mm -hmm. as you can see. So, are you a self-trained entrepreneur, metal worker, uh, machinist, fabricator? Yeah, self-trained slash M hub. Sweet. Tuesday. Fusion 360. Fusion 360. Sweet. Yeah. So, like, um, six months ago, I didn't actually know how to use Fusion. That's awesome. And I know how to CNC now. That's so awesome. It's all about, you know, uh, leveraging the resources that you have yeah. available. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Perfect U shackle. Now we trim that side mm -hmm. and add a little slot, and there's some further modifications, obviously, but that uh, that gets us the shape that we're looking for. Awesome. So, Thanks for showing us that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So, a couple other pieces of equipment to see here. Um, we have uh, some grinding machines here, uh, some handhelds in the closet in here, and then we've got a TIG welder, a MIG welder a plasma cutter uh, and a spot while they're here um, with these awesome convenient you yeah, know, those uh, are great. ventilation. So uh, this articulates and you can move it around and get right over your workpiece. It's like the world's largest lock line. Um, this is the wood shop. Uh, so we got lots of woodworking equipment in here. Um, and this is actually where we make the dust. Yeah. I'm gonna introduce you to Cheyenne. Uh, she's our wood shop guru. Cool. Cheyenne, do you have a second? This is uh, John Saunders. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. We're in the wood shop. We are in the wood shop, one of the busiest labs here in Empire. Uh -huh. It seems quiet, but give it two hours. Yeah. 
buzzing with not only the shop but running. Yeah. We have people trying out different sort of materials, cutting things out through a laser cutter, all sorts of things. Awesome. Yeah. So you, people can run the machines themselves or you'll help them or you'll do it for them? So we facilitate that K base. We give them the knowledge base. They need help. We definitely are here to roll with them a couple times, especially with the shop bot. And if they need fabrication help, we are also possibly. Possibly willing to. Yeah. Cool. Fair enough. You ask nicely. Yeah, it's nicely. No, fair enough. Yeah. Cool. What's your favorite machine here? I'm an old fashioned kind of gal and I like the joiner. Brand. Joiner? Oh, yeah? Oh yeah? That's here. cool. So it's a nice melding of things that we're seeing and trying to help facilitate. But like thinking outside the box, not only just utilizing what's in here, but what we have available. Right. Really nice organization. I like that. Thank Good you. working yeah. space. I've seen a couple of wood shops where they have all the equipment and there's nowhere to actually build your right. project. Right. We try to keep space open. Yeah, we have a 5S system too, uh -huh. so you know actually where you know the tool goes. Every tool has a place. Yep. Uh, they're all labeled, um, so you know where what, what drawer, you know what shop yep. they're supposed to be in. Try to uh, keep it intuitive. Yeah. Yep. Not over explain things. You could just walk in yes. there, have an idea of where things are and what to do. Sweet. Yeah. Very cool. Cool. Awesome. Thank you very much for the tour, Shane. Uh, well, there's one more lab to see. It's the UL testing lab. Oh, yeah. Right around the corner. This is gnarly. Uh, so this is the UL testing lab. It's sponsored by UL. Um, they interact with the MHUB members here and help them with the certification process. They'll do office hours. We have a dedicated Slack channel, so we can ping a team of like 20 UL That's employees. Amazing. I know. So, so can you explain in like two sentences, to bring a consumer product to market, you have to have, or you don't have to, but so you, you have to go through some certifications, um, and sometimes it's just performance testing. Does this product do what I expect? Will it meet, uh, you know, what I'm claiming it does on the packaging? Um, but also sometimes there's safety concerns. You know, especially with you know RF and, and frequency, you want to make sure that uh, if you have a Bluetooth product, a Wi-Fi, a cellular, that it's not interfering with any other you know devices. So we do have a lot of spectrum analyzers. Uh, so cool. Uh, yeah. So these uh, some of this equipment Motorola did leave behind, which is very fortunate because um, it's very expensive. Right. A lot of power analyzers, battery testers, high-powered scopes. And hey, Bill's sharing a story. You know, one of the things I love about this is that sometimes the answer is. Don't worry about UL. You know, for instance, you, there are existing turnkey wireless solutions where you don't have to necessarily you buy a pre-certified yeah. chip. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But sometimes it's you don't always know those things as an entrepreneur unless you've got that resources, that right. team of people to talk to. Yeah. And I would recommending the first product you're doing, uh, you go with a pre-certified module until your volume gets high enough where you can go through the certifications uh, to reduce reduce cost and volume. Right. Um, then over here we have a lot of metrology equipment, uh, measuring equipment, um, you know, pin gauges. Um, circling around the lab we have heat and humidity chambers. Uh, so if you want to do thermal cycles on a product, you can do that. Um, you know, we've got uh, thermal cameras, microscopes, um, you know, an Instron machine that we're about to set up, and uh, you know, these force gauges, strain oh, gauges, yeah, yeah. Uh, pressure gauges. Yeah, so this, this machine will put a, a known force uh, at a certain rate um, on, a, on a sample piece, and you can look and record um, kind of your, uh, your, your loads while, while operating this machine. Cool. And so folks from UL will come in here periodically where you can actually yeah. have so face-to-face. They'll do office hours, yeah. um, and they, you know, they're not going to certify you here, but they're, uh, they'll give you access to all the UL standards if you're an MHUM member. So you can look at, say you're developing a baby product, you might know what, you know what things that need to be in a water bottle, what materials you can use, what you can't. Uh, so that's very helpful for our members. Very cool. And that goes back to tying in the full picture of, of executing on an idea, which is, yeah. which is not just the machining part that I love. Right. It's that full spectrum. 
process. Yeah, and, and you gotta make sure that what you've machined really meets your functional requirements and your design parameters, and that's what happens in the testing lab. Awesome. So this here is the, the co-working space. Um, so any team for 300 bucks can, can sit here, uh, get access to a shared desk, yep. uh, and access to all the tools, so those okay. included in all the memberships. Um, I'll show you some of the dedicated desk space. So these are assigned seats. Um, these are $410 a month. Uh, and if you're a team, you may want a dedicated um, seat where you don't actually have to pack up all your stuff every day. Um, you can keep kind of your experiment or, or your products out on the desk and leave a monitor in a workstation. A couple of fun things over here. So this oh, is my this desk. This is awesome. Yeah, so um, I'm, I'm a Red Bull addict. I drink a lot of Red Bull. I probably drink uh, two or three cans a day. Um, and I'm very particular about the temperature of my Red Bull. Uh, and you know, when I worked at, uh, at IDEO, um, I would put the Red Bull in the freezer oh. so I could get it colder than yes. what it was in the refrigerator. Right, right, right. And after the third time it exploded, they're like, Bill, you can't do that anymore. Uh, so I built this machine to chill a can of Red Bull. It takes about five minutes. Um, and then when I want it, shoots up and I got that a cold can. That was amazing. Yeah. Shoots up and I got a that cold can. That was amazing. So yeah, then you just drop a new one in. It goes down in this chamber here, um, and I built my own refrigerator. So uh, there's an Arduino processor that powers this, um, displays the temperature. I've got a cooling coil here, uh, double wall insulation. The cooling coil, um, I machined, I bored out a, an aluminum tube here. It's basically like a heat sink. Instead of uh, attract, or holding the heat, it's holding the cold. Uh, and uh, it'll chill a can uh, through conduction, uh, which is much faster than you know convection. Sure. Um, you know, in a normal fridge, uh, and so it, it chills the can um, very fast. And then we, I got it hooked up to the air supply, so it. Just, uh, <laughs> will you do? Will you do? Yeah, uh, I'll shoot it again. So a little foot pedal here. Have you ever? Do I miss? Yeah. No, not not. <laughs> sometimes I'll accidentally step on the foot pedal. Yeah, uh, that's funny. You know, like I'll, I'll roll back from my desk and it's just like pop. Yeah. This was my first Arduino project. So um, I became familiar with Arduino maybe about seven years ago. Uh, and it's a, basically a microcontroller um, where you can interface the digital world with the physical world. So you can program um, this chip uh, to take a set of inputs from sensors and control outputs. Uh, so this is a, a slinky machine. Um, and all it does is uh, move the slinky back and forth. Um, so it's got these electromagnets that uh, stop the slinky and reverse it. Uh, and then it's got these two sensors yes. here um, that it knows when it gets back to its home position. So it's not, that's what's awesome about this is it's not a dumb device, it's a smart device. It's aware of. Yeah, it's aware of the slinky's position. Yeah. Um, and it's it's electromechanical pneumatic system. Yes. So there's a lot of uh, technology going in, into this thing. Um, there's some dials in the back where I can control the spring uh, and the speed. Every slinky is a little bit different. So this has its own kind of spring mass constant. Um, if I put another slinky here, it would. It's not the machine has to be tuned. Tuned. To each sure. Slinky. Sure. So, um, it was kind of one of those things where, you know, can this be built? Can I do it? You know, and, um, and I got lucky and it turns out it works, so. Two for two. That's, that's <laughs> absolutely amazing. And folks, it's, it's this kind of project, as whimsy as this is, there's a huge amount of real world application to a project like this. And the, frankly, the confidence behind building it is, yeah. is amazing. You learn a lot. Um, and it, 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 I didn't understand how complicated this system was until, until I built it, you know. Uh, and there's always challenges along the way. And it's just, it's the ability to overcome those challenges that makes you successful. Awesome. Well, folks, I hope this was an awesome tour for you, and I hope we'll be able to see you guys here in September for the uh, Manufacturing Entrepreneurship Summit. Yeah, looking forward to it. Come by. Thanks for the tour, Bill. Yeah, thank you, John. Uh, so, so, so I was on my way out, and then Bill's like, no, 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 hold on. <laughs> yes. So this is a uh, robotic drum kit, um, and this was something that I did with a team of four for a Red Bull competition. Um, Red, for Red Bull? For Red Bull. Okay, yeah. Uh, the product that I'm addicted to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so they put us in a, in a machine shop, gave us 72 hours. Oh, yeah, I've heard of this. The Red Bull Creation Shop. Yes. Yeah. So That's we awesome. We had to build a musical instrument uh, in 72 hours. They gave us um, 
you know, some, uh, some parts, put mm -hmm. us in a lab uh, with access to machines, and the topic was signal to noise. Okay. So we had to build a musical instrument. Um, and so we built this ro robotic drum kit. We since then uh, installed it on our ceiling here because that's really that's the only cool. Place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really the place. And, and basically, it's using door lock actuators, like on your car, where mm -hmm. you like to lock the doors. Sol um, solenoid. The fire, yeah, yeah, it's like a. Well, it's actually it's, a, it's similar to a solenoid where uh, this is actually a motor with a rack and pinion. Uh, but you get the same motion okay. like you would in a solenoid. Uh, but the advantage here is you get uh, the, the solenoid, your strongest, the closer you get in. Mm -hmm. um, getting a little yes. technical, but, uh, but here you get, you know, two inches of motion uh, with, at 12 Ooh, volts, good. you know, so you get a lot of power. So mm -hmm. um, there's also an app that goes with it. I just got a new phone, so I don't have the app, but I'll do a power cycle. Uh, and this will give you an idea of what... I don't have the mics on, but that's okay. Uh, you will hear... That's amazing. Thanks. That's awesome. And, and like, yes, um, very cool. Very cool. Uh, 